In the last video, we were tied up here at Indian Town. Good times and Kantiki had spent the night at this pretty cool boatyard in the middle of nowhere. This morning, we were gonna be heading up the St. Lucie River. This river or ditch or canal, whatever you call it, is what connects the east and the west coast of Florida. And along the way, there are some points of interest, like this swing bridge. Can you imagine building a bridge that pivots and can support the weight of a train? Along the way, you see astonishing technological achievements that you otherwise might not think about. Like this bridge right here. How many people go over this bridge and don't even think twice about the engineers that dreamt it up and the people who built it and the people underneath who fish these places and travel? These thoughts crossed my mind as we moved along the canal and in some spots, there's really nothing to see. Even if you have a runaway imagination, like me. It's just a long stretch. With an occasional sailboat here, or a cool house there. Dog leg here. <laughs> sometimes it's a white dog leg, sometimes it's a black dog leg. Around this dog leg, there was something that was very interesting. The next lock. Here we are at the St. Lucie lock, and we are waiting for the doors to open so we can go through. You can see the gusty wind on the water. It's one of the reasons we should have left Moorhaven a few days earlier than we did. But schedules kind of took over, and here we are. Instead of already being to Fort Pierce, we still have a good amount of traveling to do and a lock to traverse, the last one of this waterway, and we'll have to do it in windy conditions. These things take a while sometimes. I'm told that the drop-off here is pretty steep too. I think I remember somebody saying it was 14 feet. Between those crazy winds and the big drop, I was glad to again have my friend D'Artagnan with me because single-handing this lock would have been quite the chore. And it was certainly nice to know that this was the last lock we were gonna to have to deal with for quite some time. I don't see anybody in there, do you? I think I can, I can see radar arches. Oh yeah, I see them now. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Man, that much of a drop. Mike at Fort LaBelle's was, uh, said something about a 14-foot lock. That's got to be it. That's got to be it. Yeah, because I couldn't even see the boat, and I just now see it. That's the top. Good lord. This might be interesting. Yep. Yeah. Well, I guess the good thing is, if we drop down in there with this wind, we won't feel it. I was a little dubious what with the canyon of concrete that we found ourselves in last time at Mayaka. The winds inside that tunnel caused all kinds of havoc. Here we had a lot of time just to sit around and think about it. We didn't know how much time, so we didn't bother anchoring up. We just tried to keep the boat still. And because the drop was so steep, or in the westbound vessel's case, the rise was so steep, it took quite a while before they were free to leave and make way for us. Westbound, go ahead and start your exit. That was quite a wait. And it was now time to wake D'Artagnan from his nap. It's been 26 minutes and the boats are just starting to come out. We learned a couple things since the last lock and D'Artagnan had a boat hook this time. Not that it really mattered. The lock tender was in a position to help us through this time. It certainly is funny how weather can mess with you, despite this being a much steeper drop and the winds blowing a lot harder, everything went very smooth. We were certainly aware not to tie off though, not when you're going down. That would have been <laughs> really bad. 
and as we neared the bottom, I couldn't help but think of what was behind those doors. A wall of water, just dying to crash through. Just don't look, just don't look. Instead, I paid attention to the fact that the motors cranked right up, both of them. How nice is that? And having somebody on board, we exited without a single issue. How sweet it is. section of river was nice and protected from a north wind but that was all soon gonna end okay. yeah it's a little windy out we're trying to get across this waterway tuck in behind a, uh, a bit of land so we can anchor up it is blowy let's say it's 20 25 Although Good Times and Contiki plowed through these conditions without really much of a problem, if we were on kayaks or something or small vessels, this would have been a borderline situation. Instead, we just kept plowing ahead. The problem is we didn't have a destination in mind, just a very long path. And we kept our eyes open for somewhere along this path where we could stay for the night and then pick up the next morning but the winds were really howling. At this point, the chart plotter was on and our path was laid out before us, and that was pretty much all we had to go on. With the wind direction, we knew that up ahead there was an island that would protect us from this wind and also a drawbridge that might be in our way. Passing through the drawbridge, we noticed that up ahead of us there was a rail bridge. Off to the side there were some small vessels, <laughs> hardcore fishermen hiding from the wind, of whom I was slightly jealous. But good times in Kantiki were meant to just keep plowing ahead, not to stop and have fun. We had some place to find to spend the night. see the flag on the front it's kind of limp and then facing forward 
we were traveling with the following sea. Makes for squirrely steering. And with this front that passed, the temperature was going down. As we passed into the shadow of this bridge, we could feel the cold air and longed for the sun again. My little greenhouse flybridge was a wonderful thing to protect me as we kept making mile after mile. Up ahead, around a corner, we knew that there was a public boat ramp and perhaps a place where we could spend the night and get out of this wind. It was unconventional, but <laughs> so is this trip, and so is the person that I am following. So we made for it, and before we knew it, we were in the lee of an island, <laughs> but seemingly under attack from aircraft. really under attack from aircraft, we were definitely in the lee of an island. Mike had found a place for us to spend the night without fear of dragging anchor, but it's not a place where I would get a lot of sleep. And the next morning, we would be underway again before daylight. What a difference. 